So how many times a day are you actually supposed to feed your fish? Why is it important to feed your fish? And what is fish food actually made of? We're gonna discuss all those things and more in today's video. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode from New Agrarian on YouTube, where we're all about aquaponics, hydroponics, and agriculture. Today's episode is all about fish food, so let's talk about it. So in aquaculture, the two main reasons that you feed your fish in any setting are one, for their health, and two, for their growth, depending on whether or not you want to grow the fish out. Fish food that you purchase is actually packed full of vitamins and minerals and other amino acids that fish need to both grow and thrive. Without a completely sound nutritional diet, fish will experience health issues just like you and me. This is why it is so difficult to make your own cost-effective food in an aquaculture setting. As far as an aquaponics system goes, remember that the feed that your fish digests is actually responsible for fertilizing the plants in your aquaponics system. This is something I talked about a little bit in this video. Check that out, I'll put it in the description below. But how does feeding fish compare to feeding other animals like livestock? Well, something that's worth noting about feeding fish is their high feed conversion ratios. Basically what this means is the weight of food that you feed fish, they convert a large portion of that directly into body weight. So in general, you can expect 1.5 to 2 pounds of food to put on one pound of fish biomass, which is pretty good. Compared to that of, let's say, a beef cow where nine pounds of food puts on one pound of body mass. So for this reason, fish are talked up a lot in aquaculture because of the sheer cost of food. If you have a cheap source of food, you can put a lot of body weight on a fish faster than you can a beef cow. But how much food do fish actually need per day? So a pretty widely accepted number for that is one to 3% of the fish's body mass per day. And obviously it's much easier to calculate this number if you have a tank of let's say 50 fish that are all 100 grams. You would take 50 times 100 and you would get 5,000 grams. So one to 3% of 5,000 grams of food per day would go into that tank. This is why it's important to know the biomass of each of the tanks in your system. As soon as fish absorb that yolk sac when they're in the yolk fry stage, they'll generally start with 1% of their body weight move up to two, move up to three. By three months old or so, they should be eating 3% of their body weight per day. They'll kind of sustain that amount of food until they reach a thousand grams or more, and then you'll start to taper that off once the fish approaches its max size. So by the end of its growth period, you want to decrease that food per day. And that one to 3% of their body weight in food per day, I like to divide into two feedings per day, one in the morning and one in the evening. And just remember that a full grown fish needs less food in terms of body mass than a fish that is in the middle of grow out. Now just like a human diet, fish food is composed of proteins, fats, carbohydrates, and a lot of other minerals and amino acids like I mentioned earlier in the video. And depending on the fish species and the stage of growth that they're at, the protein, fat, and carbohydrate percentages will change. For example, a carnivorous fish like a salmonid requires a diet that is close to 50% in protein. That's very, very high compared to that of a tilapia, which is in the neighborhood of 30 to 33% protein. Again, different species, different protein requirements. Similarly to the amount of food per day, the protein requirement that you give your fish will actually go down as the fish reaches maturity as well. So as the fish progress through grow out, they generally require less protein. So what are some things that might affect the fish at your farm in regards to feeding rate? The first is your water quality. If you have poor water quality, your fish will not eat and they will not grow and they will not grow plants. It's a downward spiral that you should try to avoid and it all starts with keeping good water quality. When the fish are stressed, they will not eat. The next thing you should consider is your water temperature. Temperature actually has a direct effect on fish metabolism and every fish has what's called its ideal thermal breadth. And basically what thermal breadth is, it is the temperature at which a fish species will thrive metabolically the best. So if you're raising tilapia and your temperatures are in the 60 degree range, they're not going to eat as much food as they would at 75 degrees. They're going to digest that food better at 75 degrees, and they're gonna just straight up eat a lot more food at 75 degrees. Salmonids require a minimum temperature of about 38 degrees, so their thermal breadth is a completely different window. They actually will eat best from 55 to 65 degrees. So temperature is definitely something that is very important to consider depending on your operation, but generally speaking, fish will eat and require more food if the temperature is higher. You should consider the size of your food. Obviously when fish are frying fingerlings, they're not gonna be able to eat entire pellets of food. If you have food that's for another fish species that meets the nutritional demands of the fry that you have, you can simply crush it up with 
a tool or a spice grinder or a blender and feed it to your younger fish. I find that this is better than buying different sized pellets of food. Get one that is the nutritional requirement that you need and crush it up. You can also buy sinking or floating food. The only fish species that I really needed sinking food for was catfish. They kind of hang out at the bottom and they rarely come up to the top to feed. But most other species that I've raised, tilapia, koi, goldfish, trout, bass, they all would come up to the surface whenever I fed them. Also consider your filtration when it comes to sinking or floating feed. If you have a center bottom drain fish tank, you might want to avoid sinking food because you don't want the food to get sucked in by your filter and then waste that money. The frequency of feeding, like I mentioned, you want to divide your food up into two feedings the morning and the evening that's what works best for me if that does not work for you you can look into equipment that will automatically feed your fish there are demand feeders there's automatic feeders that are on timers if you have a very large scale aquaponics operation you probably want to consider looking into some sort of automated feeding schedule with me with six fish tanks it's really not a big deal it takes five minutes to feed them and uh, it's kind of fun too. And the last thing I wanted to talk about in this video is what is actually in your food. I think there's definitely a lot of room in this industry for somebody to create a fish food that is nutritionally sound and doesn't rely on wild fisheries or other livestock to create. So the fish food that I use here has soybean, it has pork parts in it, yes pork like a pig, and most fish foods that you purchase are going to have a percentage of fish meal in them which is basically small oily fish that are caught in the ocean that are very nutritionally dense. In addition to those things, they might have poultry in them, they might have some other plant parts in them, and then they'll have a lot of vitamins and minerals added to them. But my point is, I really think there's gotta be a better ingredient out there to provide all of these things that fish need. If it were me, what I think is a good idea is farming some type of shellfish, like an oyster or a clam or a zebra mussel maybe. Something of that nature that is a nutritionally complete bivalve that eats only algae, maybe make a fish food out of that. Maybe we could start a sardine or a bunker farm, something where we could farm oily bait fish sustainably. But the manufacturing of fish food is one of the biggest holes, I think, in this industry, and I really think it needs some people to lead the charge in making a more sustainable fish food. This is the fish food I use. I buy it from a local hardware store for $12.99 a bag, and this bag will last me almost a month. So somebody commented how much is the food per month. It's really, really cheap but I would like to see a more sustainably sourced type of fish food. Also, I do know of some people that have duckweed and other aquatic plants on their farm that they grow and then they feed to the fish in an aquaponic system. The problem with that is the duckweed and these other plants won't have all the nutrients a fish need, so you can't solely rely on an aquatic plant to feed your fish in most cases. So that's pretty much it, guys. If you have a rough count of the fish in a system, you can calculate the biomass and then you can calculate the amount of food to feed that system. Definitely consider those other things we talked about in the video, such as water temperature and water quality when it comes to taking care of your fish. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll catch you in the next episode.